Hey, welcome back everybody. Steve Looney here from graphicdesignertips.com. This is episode number three of my new professional logo design series. And what's really cool about this series, as opposed to my other ones, is these are actual logos that I designed for clients of mine out in the real world right now. So they went through a rigorous process of, uh, you know, research and going back and forth with, with clients. And not only am I going to show you how to build the logo uh, in Adobe CC 2014, but I am going to give you reasonings why specific things were done. And um, that's what you're going to get out of these series. But before I go any further, I just want to mention that there is an extended version of not only this powerful episode, but every episode in this entire series. And the extended version is really going to go into everything that you don't see when you see a finalized logo. All the things I have to deal with with a client, you know, sending them initial drafts, them not liking the initial drafts, or them liking, then doing revisions, stuff like that. Uh, you can get more information about this in the description of the video or on our website. Um, but it's definitely something that uh, I wanted to... Uh, bring because I get questions on this stuff all the time. So it's it's more than just using a pen tool or other tools to, to build a logo. There's so much else involved. And if you get it down pat, you're going to be making thousands of dollars a month at just building logos. So what I want to do now is I want to critique this and then we're going to jump into Illustrator 2014 and build it. All right, so Iron Man House Lifting is the name of the company. And this logo basically depicts exactly that. We have a house and Iron Men are, or the letters of Iron Men, is what is lifting this house. So Iron Men is saying, this is what we're going to do for you. We are the Iron Men that lift, lift your houses. Um, we spoke about this on the initial meeting, but talking about something called an I-beam in the steel industry, which is basically what this depicts, uh, the client was super thrilled with everything. Um, and it was based off original sketches where I actually met up with a client, um, which I'll show you in the extended version. But um it's just, it's just uh, once you get a client seeing something um, that they would, you know, they they have it in their heads a lot of times, but it's your goal to make it come out on the canvas for them to, you know, fall off their chair. So um, if you notice Iron Man, this font right here is Futura Black, but let's go to the full version of Iron Man without any symbolic, you know, designs around it. Um, because this can be used this way, which is fine, but you're going to notice that the I is different there's no serifs basically on the, on the eye uh or not serifs but they don't extend at the top of the bottom so if i go back to the full version you're going to see that the eye is different and the reason i did that was to have the eye be a part of the eye beam now like i said i don't know if i is spelt with an e or an i in the beginning if it's an i it's just ironic that it starts with an i iron men but um i actually like i said i changed that eye up um to have it kind of line up with this up here and line up down here. Now, what's cool about colors, all right? Uh, first of all, we have two colors um, in here, the red and the black, that the fact that you have the I and the RON the same color, even though the I is different, you're going to read it as one word because it is red. Um, you're gonna read the MEN, even though the M is on a upward slant because it's in the same color. The other great thing about colors is the fact that you have between the N and the M, no spacing. You don't need a space sometimes when your color changes. Now, okay, well, Steven, what if the logo is black and white? How are you gonna know? But it would be grayscaled. So the red would be actually a, 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 a value of black, which would be not 100%. So checking it out on the screen now, you can see that it still works like that uh, when you grayscale. You won't want everything 100% black. Um, and even if it was 100% black, for whatever reason, if it had to print out that way for some strange reason, like I said, then uh, it would still work out. So um, also with, uh, with the colors, I just want to mention that standard colors, a lot of times black is a standard color and a specific red because if you go outside of standard colors, you might get charges for it. You might get, you know, charges to mix ink. And you kind of just want to set this up uh, to make it as easy for your client in the future as possible. Yeah, they can find a red that's a little bit similar, but are they going to be happy with it? Probably not. So now that I've critiqued this, let me know in the comments below at the end of the video if there's something that I missed or, you know, I mean, like I said, I designed it. But if there's something that you notice about it or uh, something you like, something you don't like, something... Uh, I just want to say hi. So uh, let me get into building this logo now. 
All right, so now we're in Adobe Illustrator CC 2014, and I am working on an 8.5 by 11 canvas. As you can see, I did put the numbers above for the colors, so you can now add them into your swatches and follow along. If you have the extended version, you'll be able to go side by side with this exact vector file that I provide to you. So what I want to uh, just say really quick is that each logo you ever design is going to take a lot of time. And there's going to be a lot of time refining and just making changes and little tweaks and adding little uh, things, elements to it. And, you know, like, for instance, if I zoom in here, you know, you got these extra bars. Do they do they need to be here? You know, say I take these bars out. Well, you do need them on the bottom because it needs to contain it. But did you really need them in there? Yeah, in a way, you kind of did because it kind of adds that other element to it. Um, there's so many different ideas that you're going to throw around on your canvas to get it to where it needs to be. And that's all I really want to say. So uh, the very first thing we are going to do is, and we can do this a number of ways. We can literally trace this whole thing out with the pen tool, um, or we can use other, other means. So what I do want to do is use the other means. So I want to come into my rectangle tool first. I want to make a rectangle, and I just want to make it, let's see, about this long. I'm going to move this rectangle down. All right. I'm going to hit A on my keyboard. I'm going to select this line segment here. I'm going to now hold shift while I pull this over. Okay. I just want to scale this to, to my scale up here. And I want to hit hold shift on the um, keyboard. Click this line segment and pull this in. And I just want to now again pull that line segment down. I want to kind of match it up with what I have. Okay. One, one done. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to use the pen tool because we could use the pen tool for that, but I want to jump around and teach you more tools. So what I want to do is I want to click. We're going to just make a, a little triangle. All right. And we're just going to come around. The triangle can be all funky looking. You see, I could do this with the triangle. We're going to fix that in a second. So I'm going to now lay this over, this right here. And you can't see that it has those jaggedy lines under here. Because until I select it, you see the actual selection, but we're going to fix that in a minute. I now want to take this and I just want to make another rectangle and make the little chimney right here. Because whenever you see that on a logo, you know it's it's a structure, you know it's a house. So what I now want to do is I want to take all three of these elements and I want to come into my Pathfinder and I want to hit the first top left option that says Unite and it makes it one full shape now which is really cool. Um, all right, let me just see something really quick. Okay, cool. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to come into here and I want to click. I'm going to hold shift while I click this so it keeps a straight line. Come up here. Well, actually, I went over way too far. Let's back up. Come over here, here. Okay, and we're going to fill that with white just to see what it's going to look like if we decide to cut it out. So, all right, once you find out if you like it or not, because this point might be too close and it looks funny now. Um, once you get it to that point, you're going to select all two of these objects. So you have the white and you have the black back here. You want to select both of these. Hit minus front right there. And now you have a shape that is that color with the cutout right in the middle. Pretty cool, right? The very next thing we're going to do is we're going to come into our text tool and we're going to type out R-O-N-M-E-N -E because at this point we now know that we're not going to use the I in it. And actually what I do want to do is I want to take that N out of the N and I'm going to now scale the E up till it pretty much gets to this corner. You can hit Command R on your keyboard and pull over a ruler if you need to. All right. And now you can see basically that's where the E ends up. Pull that down there a little bit. We're going to move this all later. And we're going to keep the R. Let's see. Basically where it is right now. Okay, let's just leave it right there. We're now going to go to option click and we're going to shift this over and we're going to type out the letter N. And we're now going to hit escape. What we're now going to do is hit E on our keyboard. And if you're in Adobe Illustrator CC 2014, you can now do different types of distorts. So you can do a free distort, a perspective distort, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a perspective distort on this, and I just want to see what's going to happen if I go like this. Oops, I have to create outlines first. So I'm going to go to Shift Command O or type Create Outlines. Oh, 
okay? And now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually come up, gonna come up to the free to store tool and I'm just gonna take this right here and I'm gonna pull this point up while holding shift till it contours on that same angle and the same thing with the bottom. Looks exactly what like I was looking for. You can even E on your keyboard and squeeze this in a little bit just to give it the illusion that it's not too much thicker than the other letters. Um, the next thing I want to do is I just want to come and I want to make three rectangles. I want to make one over here. All right. And then I just want to make the one on the top. And hit, hit V on your keyboard to get your regular selection. And option click shift. And we're going to copy that down. All right, cool. So if you notice, I have the top one a little bit thicker than the bottom one. And I guess I was trying to figure out a good balance between these. Um, although this is thicker than that, that's thicker than that. Um, what I want to do is I want to select all three of these, come into the Pathfinder and hit Unite. All right. Now I'm working basically with this. You see how I really need to get the R in the I so the I kind of hugs it and, it and it still reads as the same word. So you can do that as a, a couple of ways. We can either, uh, we, what we could have done is we could hit A on our keyboard, select all four of these points, and maybe nudge this over two times. And you got what you do with one side, you have to do with the other. All right, we're going to nudge this over two times now. And oops, all right, we're going to pull this over a little bit. And we're going to now scale this up, okay, so we get this in here a little bit. Uh, actually, we got to do that with the end too, because remember, that's going to be a part of it. Right. And if you don't like what's happening here, what you could do is you can come into your character and you can add some tracking to kind of push these apart a little bit. Pull that R just a little bit more in. I don't like the space between the O and the N. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click in the middle. I'm going to hit option and I'm just going to hit the left arrow and it's going to nudge it over a little bit. I'm just going to move this over so it's centered right there. Cool. So now we have Iron Men. I'm going to select all of this and go to type create outlines. All right. What I now want to do is I want to very simply come into here and make a rectangle. It goes right to here. It's going to be filled with black. I'm going to go to option, click, and I'm going to shift it down till it's level with the bottom of here. You can zoom in, you can pull out guides, but you know, after a while you want to start doing this by eye. I, I say it every video, I'm not going to stop saying it. You want to refine all your stuff in the end. Refine, spend all your time refining in the end. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is going to go to option click. We're going to shift this over and copy it. We're going to hit A on our keyboard and hold shift after you click on that point. And you're going to pull this over. You zoom in and now, say you're clicked off. You can literally click and hover those two points and now pull this up. Don't, um... Yeah, you can hold shift when you're doing it. That's fine. And lastly, we're going to go to option, click, shift right there. Okay, so you see that something's off right there. So what you're going to do is you're going to pull this up. You're going to match that angle. And visually, you cannot tell the difference that this angle is different than this angle. All right. What I now want to do is I want to create a rectangle. And we're just going to... Put that rectangle right in the center right there. And you can see with that little X in the middle of the rectangle that it's really going straight up with this point right here. Uh, what we're going to now do is we're going to make two rectangles. One, two. And what you can do is you can select all three elements, hit the horizontal align and then vertical align. So it's going to be in the center. And let's see what happens if we go into our pathfinder and do minus front. Boom. All right, so now we have one, two, three, four squares. All right, we're going to zoom out of here and we're going to make the top two the red. We're going to hit I for eyedropper. I'm just going to select this up here or if it's in your swatches already. And now I'm going to select I-R-O-N and I'm going to do the same thing. Boom, there we go. And lastly, we're going to hit the text tool. We're going to type out house lifting. All right, option eight. Uh, on a Mac for a bullet moving option eight foundation we're gonna hit escape all right obviously that's not the font that's a uh, something different going on there so we want to type out myriad pro italic 
I believe. So semi bold italic. Let's try that. All right. We're going to I'm going to change these bullets to red. Okay. The reason I'm changing them to red is to break it apart from the other let from the other letters. All right. And I know what I did here. I put an extra space. So I'm going to do that here. And we're now going to hit escape. I'm going to scale this down just a little bit because I don't want to extend it too much because then you got this little thing going on right here and it doesn't look right to me. It doesn't feel right. So let's see if we're missing anything. Um, no, not bad for a first shot. Again, this is actually a very simple logo, but coming up with it is not the simple, simple part ever. If, uh, if you've been doing this for a while, you know what I mean. So that's it. That's uh, our logo in Adobe Illustrator. All right, so thanks for checking out another video. Let me know in the comments below what you learned in this video because I guarantee there's no way you just watched this video and didn't learn one thing. So definitely subscribe to our channel also by clicking the button. You'll get these in your email before anybody else does. And if you're really, really interested and you want to dedicate time to learning more and making a lot of money as a logo design because it's not easy. There's a lot of things that you have to go through to be a good logo designer and experience is the best teacher. So in my course, you're going to learn a lot about my experiences and it's something that is very powerful. So if you want more information, click on the button on the screen or in the description below in the video or on a website. And that's it, everybody. I will see you for the next episode in my professional logo design series. Have a great night, everybody. Peace.